Here's the latest in Dota 2. DreamHack winner. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Okay, not quite. Here's what's really happening. Zeros become heroes. Groups for the World Cyber Games are drawn. And seriously, DreamHack winner. Your first pick for Dota 2 news. I'm What Is Hip. It's November 26, and this is Around the Fountain. From Zeros to Heroes, Zero becomes Mouse Sports yet again. After Zero's strong performance in the last several weeks, they're picked up by a pretty familiar sponsor, one they were just under the name of about a month ago. Now the team's a bit different, with a little bit of a different roster. It's going to be Black, Fada, Alex, Korokai, and Poss. Of course, I'm talking about Zero becoming Mouse Sports. Here's a statement regarding the whole situation from the Mouse Manager, Paisy, provided to Around the Fountain. A full German lineup fits very well with the organization Mouse Sports perfectly. It makes many things way easier like communications, boot camps, etc. With me being involved in both sides of the players and the organization, I always knew what both sides were looking for. I managed to get everyone to sit together and have a talk about everything. Once some misunderstandings from the past have been solved and negotiations went well, it was good to go from both sides. About the split from the original Team Zero, it was the players that were not contracted after TI2. Thus, I suggested to everyone that we can play in the leagues we hold slots in, Gosu League, Star Ladder, the Premier League, etc., just by sticking together and playing under the mouse tag to keep the slots alive and perhaps make a little bit of money from the prizes. However, due to the mixed teams, players received offers, such as Bambo going to Absolute Legends, and opted to take those offers. But after the team decided that they were going to be an entirely German lineup, I went to the organization Mouseworks, which I was still working for, and they shortly accepted after a bit of negotiations just before DreamHack winner. DK and IG have made their declarations. They're all aboard the Dota 2 train. Choo-choo! Both teams have stated that they will be playing Dota 2 for the World Cyber Games Festival in 2012. They were forced to choose between Warcraft 3 Dota and Dota 2, but after both teams considered, they both chose Dota 2 after qualifying for both events. Tongfu and LGD will be taking up their empty spots. LGD and Tongfu, definitely the most notable teams in both the groups. Groups are also out for the Dota 2 World Cyber Games. Heading up Group A is Invectus Gaming and Garage Gaming. Heading up Group B is DK and Orange Esports, followed by Mouse Sports. Even more groups, as the defense has its competing groups drawn, there are four groups, A, B, C, and D, each with some extremely strong teams heading them up. In group A, we've got Complexity and Mouse, group B, Dignitas and Empire, group C, No Tidehunter and EG, and group D, Inatus, Vincere, and Absolute Legends. The qualifiers are over for the eight open slots that you can join at joindota.com on November 28th, so expect the regular season to start sometime after that. Digibet has expanded to Dota 2. Now, this is probably good for the growth of esports, but uh, not so much for your wallet. Digibet is an esports betting company that expanded to esports during Gamescom 2012 with StarCraft 2 and CS Global Offensive. DreamHack Winter was the first event to feature Dota 2 with Navi leading the odds. Good luck to your wallet. DreamHack Winter, it's all over. Here's a recap of what went down. During the group stages, eight teams were eliminated, leaving only the top-notch teams. These consisted of Natus Vincere and Absolute Legends from Group A, No Tide Hunter and Evil Geniuses from Group B, Empire and We Has Asians from Group C, and last but not least, Dignitas and Fnatic from Group D. Once the brackets were out, we see Dignitas getting knocked out by Empire 2-0, along with another 2-0 knockout of Absolute Legends at the hands of No Tidehunter. In the next best of three, a huge upset as Natus Vincere gets knocked out by the American Menace, Team EG. The score again was 2 to zip. Finally, in the last matchup of round number one, We Has Asian gets eliminated by Fnatic RC by a score of yet again 2 to 0. Seeing a trend here? Yes, that's right. Every single matchup of round number one ended with a score of 2 to 0 for the winning teams. This trend will continue into round number two as we see no Tide Hunter winning game number one against Empire and then demolishing them again in game number two, a score of 25 to 9 in a 32 minute GG as they claim their rightful place into the finals of DreamHack alongside EG who managed to clean up Fnatic two times in a row with fear on the spend going the Mask of Madness, BKB, Daedalus build and wiping the floor. 
Into the finals of DreamHack, EG Fear plays Faceless Void, a rising star in the pro scene. It works out for the EG squad as Fear manages to farm up 755 GPM by the end of the game and carry his team to victory. In the second game, we see brilliant play by no Tidehunter and Admiral Bulldog, where Admiral Bulldog fakes a death to Roshan, causing EG to check the pit only to get cut off by Loda and the crew. This allows no Tidehunter to pick up first blood and a double kill. The game ends in a victory for No Tide Hunter, and game number three commences. Although EG won a few team fights and tried to push hard with a double necro build on their team, No Tide Hunter still manages to force the victory over the Americans and take first place in the DreamHack Dota 2 Quartz Air Vengeance Cup. And that's it for this installment of Around the Fountain. Our aimed release schedule for the show is going to be twice a week, Monday and Friday. If you're interested in joining this team, please send an email to the address right down there. As always, please subscribe to my YouTube for quick info on the next episodes. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm What is Hip, and this was Around the Fountain.